Thank you so much for hitting the play button on your favorite listening device of choice from wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Duff Tyler, and this is A Duff Said. Two weeks ago, I spoke to Lake Orion girls basketball coach Robert Bridges about the success that his team had this past season. The Dragons won a district championship for the first time since 2010. It was also the first time in 10 years that the Lake Orion girls basketball team even won a game in the district tournament. Now, a key contributor to that success was junior Audrey Wishmeyer. As you're about to hear, she grew up around the program and could not wait to leave her mark on it. My conversation with Audrey Wishmeyer starts now. Audrey, it had been 12 long years since Lake Orion had won a district title. In fact, it had been 12 years since the Dragons had won a game in the postseason. How good did it feel to be a part of the team that finally got the job done on both ends in the postseason? It was special, and it wasn't just special for me or for our team, but for Lake Orion as a whole, I feel like, and it just feels amazing to have like all our hard work pay off and accomplish something big for the program and being out there, especially with the team I want to trade for the world. just an unbelievable moment. How many years did you spend following the Lake Orion girls basketball team before you even became a player for them? It's been a while now, actually. Uh, I, when I was younger, I used to be the uh, water girl because my sister played on the team And that was probably around, like, elementary school. So it's been a while. So when you're watching this program, how many times did you think to yourself when you were on the sidelines making sure that everybody was staying hydrated, how many times did you say to yourself, someday that is going to be me, I can't wait to be a part of this team and make an impact? That's definitely crossed my mind a lot. And I'm just really glad that we got the job done. What was it about this particular group at Lake Orion High School, this girls' basketball team, that was able to finally win a district championship? I think that as a team, we're just really close. We've got a lot of of talent on the team, and together, it was just, it was great. Before the season started, you guys had a meeting with your coach. Coach Bridges handed you guys some cards and asked you to write down what your goals were for this season. What did you write down for yours? Mine definitely had that district title on that list, as well as league champs, which we weren't able to accomplish, but I'd say a district championship is definitely better. (laughs) You know, it always is, and I'm glad that you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. You guys got off to such an amazing start, and you did finish second in the OAA White. At what point during the season did you really start to think that you guys were capable of accomplishing something special this year? I think that we all knew it from the very beginning, but I think it really started hitting a lot of people after that win against Stony Creek because when we went into that game, a lot of people thought that that was going to be the end of our season, but we proved them wrong and we did the same thing against Rochester as well. Yeah, and I want to get into all of that, but before we do, I want to talk about the end of the regular season because you guys actually ended the regular season on a two-game losing streak, and that included a loss to Rochester by 20 points. Now, the season didn't end at that moment, so even though you had to see Rochester celebrate the, the league title, they won the OAA White you still had a lot left to play for, but what was said after that loss that really got you guys regrouped and ready to play in the districts? With that Rochester game, up until halftime, it was a tie game. So we knew that we could hang with them, and we just had to take it one game at a time first, beat Adams, which we did, and then, yeah, we knew we could hang with both because both with Stoney and with Rochester, we – we were both tied with them at halftime. So we knew we could hang with both of them. It was just a matter of finishing it out, which was the real goal. So you open up the tournament and you get a win over Rochester Adams. You guys won that game rather handily. 
But it had been more than a decade since Lake Orion even had a postseason win. So you guys got that monkey off your back. How did everybody celebrate just ending that losing streak? That was just a great moment for us. It, it felt amazing, especially like you, like this program hasn't done that in so long. It was, it was a special moment. Do you get to the district semifinals? The Dragons win that game over Stony Creek by two points. Now, this was a team, Audrey, that you guys lost to by 18 points in the regular season. Now, everyone is a different team from the start of the season compared to what they are when you get to the postseason. So what was different about facing them this time around? Just like you said, we had a lot of change happen. We got a lot better throughout the season and going into it, we really had nothing to lose. And all the pressure was on Stony Creek to win because they were the ones that were expected to win. So going into it, we just we just knew that we were going to put up a fight, give it our all, and that's what we did. That's how we came up with the win. It was a two-point win. It was a very close game. How were you guys able to pull that one out? Um, I think that as a team, we had really good communication. We hustled. Uh, we got some good shots to fall. I know that some of my teammates set me up really nice, gave me some good open looks. That game was on your home floor. What was it like to win in that particular game in front of your home crowd? It felt amazing. And having as much support as we do from the students to just people in the community coming out to our games, it means a lot. And it definitely helped us throughout the season. It gave us a lot of momentum. So now we get to the district championship game. Rochester, I think in a lot of people's minds, was clearly the favorite to win this game, certainly on paper anyway. Two nights earlier, they beat Eisenhower, and they won that game in dominant fashion. They held Ike in that game to just five points in the second half. What's going through your mind as you take the floor for warm-ups in your first ever district title game? Yeah, we knew we had we knew we had a lot of pressure, but we knew that once again that Rochester had the most pressure because we were going in it once again as the underdogs. So really the mindset was just they have a lot of they have a lot of tall people on that team. We just had to attack, shoot some outside shots and yeah, we knew we had to give it our all on that one. I think just listening to you, you kind of relish that underdog role. What's it like to be in that position where not everybody's expecting much out of you and then you go out and you prove everybody wrong? Yeah, it's honestly, it's thrilling because I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, Trey Young myself and seeing him prove like doubters wrong like he did in the playoffs last year. I feel like that was the kind of story with us this year and our team Uh, going into those games. No one thought that we were going to win and that's what we did. And it was just an unbelievable experience. You guys not only won that game against Rochester, but you did what only two other teams did to them all season long. You guys scored 40 points against them and you defeated them for the district championship Take me through those closing seconds when you realized that you guys had accomplished the victory and you are going to be a district champion. I just remember it. I looked up at the student section. It was just, it was packed and there's a lot of people there to support us. And just looking up at that scoreboard, that's when it really set in that everything that we've done this season has just accomplished something big and, it just, it really it meant a lot to me and the whole team as well. So take me through that entire evening. What was that whole night like and how did the people around you react? <laughs> well, right after the game, actually, my uh, dad came onto the court and he just looked teary eyed because my sister who actually played in the program previously had never gotten that playoff win. So To have one of the family members accomplish something like this was just touching and it was just, it was an emotional moment after and for the rest of the day, really. How much of that was discussed around the dinner table and in pick-me-up games around the backyard that you had got a chance to 
maybe experience something that your sister didn't. You knew you had to put in the work for it, but how much did you guys talk about that going into this season? Um, yeah, that was that was talked about quite a lot. I know that my dad and I had a lot of conversations about what this team can accomplish, and I'm just glad that we made it, that our team made it happen. Uh, yeah, it did take a lot of work, but we put in that work, and yeah, we got there. When did you first discover basketball? Um, I would say I first discovered basketball like early elementary around that time, but it's it's been a long long ride in the in the basketball department. What is it about basketball that really drew you into the sport? Um, a lot of stuff. I just like the competitive atmosphere. I like how it, it teaches you things like great life lessons that you can carry throughout your whole future. And uh, at a young age, I really got into the NBA and I used to play NBA 2K all the time. And especially watching LeBron James, that's that really drew me in right from the start. So between Trey Young and LeBron James, who would you say really influenced you to elevate your game? Um, that's a tough one, but I think I'm I'm just going to have to go with LeBron James just because, I mean, when you watch him play, he just focuses on all aspects of the game when it comes to passing, like knocking down clutch shots, getting a game securing block. Like it inspires me as well to work on every aspect of my game and do what's best for the team. Speaking of Trey Young, he just had a really great game this past Tuesday against the Knicks. He pretty much ended the Knicks season on their home floor, much like he did in the postseason a year ago. And while he does that in his own way, he does that with a lot of swagger too. How much of that have you tried to incorporate that into your game? <laughs> I, I'd like to say... I tried to incorporate it a little bit, but I'm not sure. But, yeah, <laughs> Trey Young's got a lot of swag. I like that little bow move that he that he does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to reel it in a little bit when you're in the high school level, of course. But, uh, you know, just seeing someone like that perform at that level, how much does that influence you to want to go out and do the same kind of thing in your arena? Yeah, definitely say influences me a lot. I mean, like watching guys like that is just it makes me want to get to where they're at or like strive to be better up next we talk about the special bond that the wishmeyer family shares on the basketball court when my wife and i moved to lake orion four years ago We had to do two things, get to know the area and find great pizza. That's when we met Sheldon. Sheldon's the kindest guy you'll meet in Orion Township. His heart is as big as his pizzas, and once you order one, you'll see why Sheldon is our guy for pizza time. Sheldon Street Pizza is located at 3667 Baldwin Road across from the Great Lakes Athletic Club. You can look them up online at sheldonstreetpizza.com. Sheldon is ready to serve you the best pizza, breadsticks, and sandwiches that are always made fresh when you order them. Sheldon Street Pizza. More than just pizza. And that's a Duff Said. Support for a Duff Said comes from you, the listener. It also comes from people like Bethany and Michelle, who recently became patrons of this podcast. And you can too. For as little as $2 a month or $24 a year, you can help A Duff Said continue to grow and continue to provide the great content that you've come to expect from me each week. And if you're a patron, you get access to exclusive content that sometimes doesn't make it into the show. So just go to patron.podbean.com backslash A Duff Said. I can tell that basketball is something very special between you, your dad, and your sister. How special is it to have that family bond be around basketball? Uh, it's amazing. It's 
basketball brings us together like no no other thing it's it's great to be able to always whether it's watching basketball on tv or playing together or it's great to talk basketball with them and from that we've gotten a lot closer you talked about those days when you were the water girl for the team watching your sister play how much of this was something that you wanted to get done and dedicate to her uh (laughs) Yeah, I definitely wanted to do this for her as well. Uh, I watching her at a young age, it then watching her like success, I just inspired me, and I always, <laughs> I always want to do better for her. So getting that district title, I definitely has some dedication towards her. What were those games like between the two of you when you were both growing up? Um, they were, they were pretty competitive. Uh, it was fun though, none the least. Do you guys have like a a series edge? Like who has, uh, the better win loss record against the other? Um, we don't, but I'm assuming my sister probably has the edge on that one. Okay. But, uh, there's not, uh, I'm sure she's still got a little bit of game left. Uh, I'm sure you could probably catch up if you wanted to though, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So getting back to Lake Orion and its season, after you win the district championship, you go on to play in the regionals. You take on Clarkston in the semifinals. These are two communities that are separated only by a couple of miles, really. What was it like to know that you guys were going to be facing a local team in the regionals in the postseason? Um, It was crazy because... I actually, I used to play travel basketball with a lot of those girls from Clarkston. So especially playing against Maddie Skrupski too, that was her, her game play is on another level. So that was crazy to play against her and see someone on that level. She is a phenomenal player. What was it like to play against her in travel ball and then go up against her on a big stage like the regionals? Uh, It was pretty cool, but it was seeing her play in person. It's like, she's just really smooth. She's got like that swagger that we were talking about previously, but like when she, when she drives and when she finishes like the spin that she puts in the ball, like the angle she can shoot from, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see in person. You had a little bit of swag going in that game yourself. Obviously this game did not go in Lake Orion's favor, but in the game against Clarkston, you knocked down six three-pointers. What did it mean to you to have a performance like that in a game with the season on the line? Yeah, it feels, I mean, obviously the loss was disappointing, but to be able to knock those shots down, it felt pretty good. And I just have great teammates who were finding me out there. And I'm just glad I've worked hard on my shot. I got good coaches that are always available trying to help me improve my shot. And I was just glad that that work showed up on the court and I was able to knock them down. (laughs) This was an amazing ride for the Lake Orion Dragons, but what did you take from it personally, from this entire experience, this whole season, as you get ready for next year as one of the senior leaders for the program? This year, was definitely a start of some momentum for next year and we've got a really bright future next year a lot of returning varsity players and now that we've got that good uh experience in the playoffs we've been to regionals so we'll be ready to get back after it and potentially go even further next year that was going to be my next question Uh, the field obviously in the districts and the regionals they're probably going to be stacked again next year with some great talent but what do you and the rest of this team have going for it as you get ready to get back to the regionals and take that next step? I mean, we're going to work hard in the off season. And like I said, we got a lot of good experience in the varsity department and in playoff department. So we're looking to get it, get stuff done and yeah, go even further. You've got a great nucleus coming back next season, but for the seniors that are moving on from this year's team, what was it like to play with them and to learn from them? Yeah, they were they were all so great. I I really appreciate every one of them and I'm going to miss them. They were <laughs> they definitely they had they each had their individual roles, but they played it 
a hundred percent, whether it's cheering on the team, whether it's communicating with a coach for all of us or like lifting us up or motivate, pushing everyone else harder. They, they did their role really, really well. And we're definitely going to miss them next year. Coming up, getting to know Audrey Wishmeyer. Fourth Coast Cider Works is the place to be for hard cider in Oakland County. Located in the main entrance to Canterbury Village, Fourth Coast is quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. Stop by Fourth Coast and try some of their many flavors on tap. You can also take some home in a can or a howler. Fourth Coast is open Thursday through Sunday. For a complete list of ciders and hours, go to fourthcoastciderworks.com. The best hard cider is on the Fourth Coast. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. Once again, I want to say thank you so much for hitting the play button on this podcast. And that includes two very special listeners, Michelle and Bethany. They recently became patrons of A Duff Set. Now, for as little as $2 a month or $24 a year, you can help this show to continue to grow and provide the content that you enjoy. And if you become a patron of A Duff Said, we have got a lot of great gifts in store for you. We've got bumper stickers. We've got t-shirts. Heck, I'll even record your voicemail message. So if you're having trouble ever figuring out what to say, I'll say it for you. And that's A Duff Said. If you'd like to become a patron of A Duff Said, all you got to do is go to patron.podbean.com backslash a Duff said. So this is five things that people need to know about Audrey Wishmeyer. Take me through your pregame ritual. What do you do to get ready for a game? Uh, well, one thing that's been pretty big this year is every game, this almost every game this season, I've worn a bucket hat. So that is a must have in the ritual. But uh, more importantly, I just focus on correcting my shooting form and mainly just warming up my shot. How would you describe this bucket hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got three different ones, but the one that my team and I found to be the most lucky was a white bucket hat. So I stuck with that one. Clearly, it, it helped us during uh, the Stony Creek and Rochester games. I mean, you want to hold on to that, you want to keep using it, but at the same time, someday that's going to have to go in your personal Hall of Fame. (laughs) I agree. I agree. What would you say is your hype song to get you hyped up for a game? That's a good one. I'd probably have to go with uh, What's Next by Drake. After a game, what is your favorite post-game meal? (laughs) Bagel Bites, 100%. How do you like those bagel bites flavored? Like uh, what kind of ingredients and toppings do you like to go with? Maybe a little bit of, I don't know, depend. I mean, maybe a little bit of pepperoni on there, but I'm just kind of a simple cheese pepperoni person, but they're pretty good. Now are these homemade or you do get them from the grocer's freezer? No, I get, I get them from the grocery store. What are you most looking forward to doing this summer? Um, I'm just looking forward to... Spending a lot of time with friends, uh, traveling, and most importantly, (laughs) getting the work in on the basketball end of things. You just said you want to do some traveling. Do you have any uh, locations that you're looking to head over to? Um, I don't think we've decided on anything officially with my family and I, but I think we we will be going somewhere, probably somewhere warm, hopefully. (laughs) So no up north then? Yeah, no. No. I mean, I haven't really, I don't really go up north that much. I'm mainly just kind of a warm, I just like being in the heat. So like around like Florida and areas like that. So you want to hit the beaches then this summer, I take it. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I love lakes, beaches, whatever. What would you say is your favorite beach activity? I like some good beach volleyball. I like beach volleyball. And uh, is that something your family likes to partake in? 
Oh yes, we're we're very competitive. I was just gonna say, how competitive do those games get? <laughs> they get they get pretty intense. All right. Well, I wish you all the best on the sand this year. I hope you get some dubs okay. in there. And last question for Audrey Wishmeyer: What does it mean to you to represent the community of Lake Orion? I'm just so grateful that I can represent for the town, and it feels good knowing that our accomplishments as a team is something bigger than just a game of basketball, but something that this community can be proud of. And it's just incredible having this community support us in our journey this season. It's been really nice. I would say you've done that. And then some, you have done this community very proud. You've made history for Lake Orion and you got one more chapter left to write. And I wish you all the best in doing it. I can't wait to see it. Audrey Wishmeyer, thank you so much for making some time this week on A Duff Said. Best of luck to you next season, and I'm really looking forward to having you on next season. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. And that's a wrap on this week's show. Remember, you can follow A Duff Said by going to my website, aduffsaid.com. A Duff Said can also be heard on the Podbean app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow me on Facebook. Just look for the page Sports Journalist Duff Tyler. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Duff Tyler. Until next time, this is Duff Tyler reminding you that if Duff said it, it must be true because that's what a Duff said. <laughs>